Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Why do you keep coming out of your room? I told you, you're on punishment. Go back in there and think about your actions. Hey, this is Michelle Spiva, your practical priestess of wisdom, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. You know, I just want to say we're all in this together, and I want to talk with you today about this whole thing of distancing ourselves. And so join me on the flip as we start talking about when the cure is punishment. Yeah, I'm talking about isolation. I'll see you on the flip. All right, you made it. Let's get into talking about it. I really want us to come together And I want us to first and foremost realize that we are all in this together. You are never truly alone, isolated, alienated, or forgotten. This is about us doing this together. And so today we're going to be talking about when the cure is punishment. That isolation and alienation is nothing nice. So I was looking at uh, some um, reports that are starting to come out about the impact of having been isolated for a few weeks on a lot of different people. And I must have sympathy on, on people who are not used to going from full throttle to a stall. And because I work from home and I write for a living and I podcast and I spend a lot of time alone, um, and when I say alone, I'm talking about without, you know, having to go into uh, someone's office and, and, and the like, I'm a little more adjusted to this than, you know, my average person. And so I my heart goes out, but I do want to say and, and take this time to reach out to people, especially people who are singletons, um, who may not be able to be with their, their significant other for whatever reason, and you're having to isolate alone. My, my, I, I'm giving you a digital hug right now because it is not easy and you don't have to feel badly for feeling badly about being sequestered. So I wish I could say I've got some big revelation for you. I am going to talk a little bit about what um, this distancing does. I don't know why I can't seem to say that word properly today. Distancing (laughs) does. Uh, But hopefully I'll give you some insights, give you a little wisdom smack here and there, and hopefully help you to be more inspired and enlightened to make it a little easier on you because it seems like we're in it for the long haul, whether we want to be or not. All right. And I looked at uh, the psychological ramifications of solitary confinement, uh, social alienation and isolation. And guess what? We can't slap those horrible horrible side effects on us. Um, And the reason why we can't say, oh, if you are socially uh, isolated or in solitary confinement, your heart will enlarge, you'll get hypertension, diabetes, uh, you will have uh, mental issues, your brain will actually contract and constrict and all of these horrible things. We can't paint with broad strokes like that right now because We are not actually in solitary confinement. And the reason why we're not 
is because everyone is having to have distance. So if I look out my window, I see my neighbors. I I see them at home. I checked my mail today and as surely as I checked my mail, thank goodness there was plenty of room between us. But the uh the young teenagers across the street, they came out and they were putting stuff in the um in the truck and I waved at them and they waved back and you know they had respect. They were like, you stay over there, we stay over here. <laughs> so it was fine. But it's something about knowing that we're all home and we're all here. And we're in it together. We just can't come out, you know, and have a a cul-de-sac cookout. So it makes it a little easier. Now, I'm not going to say that it makes it totally easy because I don't know your situation. I don't know if you live in a, a, a nice neighborhood where you have nice neighbors. I don't know. Um, and so I do want to give you some love and and let you know that you really are not alone. So Yes, it can be hard being uh, alone and separated and cut off from your usual interaction. And it can get really gnarly after a minute when you go and you realize, hmm, when's the last time I had human touch? Yeah, all of this stuff is important. We're used to looking at the studies of babies and uh, small children who do not get enough touch and physical contact, but they don't usually bring out the case studies that they used to do in the 1950s uh, where they had people who were isolated because of mental illness and the ravages of um, isolation that it would have on them. And so people don't, don't get to have that at the top of their mind that no matter what, there's only so much Netflixing and sleeping and um, eating cereal out of a big mixing bowl that you can do. You have to come up for air and you have to interact. And I'm talking about interaction that doesn't just require you being on Zoom calls all day long, um, you know, for work so that people can make sure that they are getting their, their work out of you. No, I'm talking about social interaction. And I like the way. One of the um, uh, references that I, I, I used and, and, and looked up today uh, said it. They said that they would rather, they have not used the term social distancing, but instead have used the term physical distancing because it makes a difference. When you tell someone to socially distance themselves, that means to cut off communication and interaction. And that's not what the, we what they're asking us to do and it's not what we should be doing. Instead, we should be maintaining as much as possible our social interaction especially in times like this. Because what do you do when every time you turn on your television or your computer, your smartwatch or your phone, they're telling you somebody else has caught the um, uh, the virus or someone has passed away from the virus or some area has run out of supplies. And it's kind of like, no, it's not kind of like it is like you are a cast member in a real life slasher thriller where you can't see where the enemy is going to strike next. It's kind of like out of the darkness, a scythe comes and you're off with your head and you're like, oh, I got God, <laughs> you know, and I, I know I'm kind of like laughing and I'm not trying to have gallows humor. What I am trying to say is, is that it's real out here and we have to remember that we're not cut off. We're not dissected from the whole. We are not going to wither up and blow away like the dust of the wind. We are not. We matter. Even if it's for just this moment, we matter. And it has to be where we understand that we are greater together than we are apart. And I do I do get how hard it can be to make this transition. And so I also want to thank people who are finally getting to the point where they're like, okay, I'm going to take one for the team. I'm not going to go out every day and, and, you know, do my daily walk and all of this. I'm going to stay in so that I can be kind to those who have to, must, mandatory, essential, have to be out. 
and who are making that sacrifice to do that. Because I know it's hard. I I know. Um, (laughs) I'll be honest, I have family members who are cooped up in the house with adult children and pets and everything. And my my heart goes out to them because just as much as I might be talking to people who who might be um, uh, self-sheltering alone, it's hard when you're self-sheltering with a family. And you might want to say, oh, please get me out of this house. Please, please, please. And so we're actually starting to see the aftermath of that right now, too. Um, they are already starting to get reports from social services and 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 the like that certain types of uh, domestic violence, uh, child abuse, and uh, other related things, they are going up. Um, I am, I'm, <sighs> I am, I am floored at how many children under the age of 18 are homeless, running away, even in times like this, because um, the home is not safe, the foster care is not protecting them and they're out on their own trying to make it in a time like this I can't even imagine but I want to just say that for all of that we have to remember that we need to do whatever we can to reach out to be there for each other and to show human kindness and this is not a we are the world kind of thing as much as it is a Calm down, breathe, and reach out. Reach out to your loved ones. If you, if you have relatives that you haven't spoken to in a while, reach out to them. Even if it's an email to make sure it's okay to contact them. You know, reach out and let them know, I'm here. Are you there? And I've been really grateful and thankful for that very thing of... Uh, reaching out and, and hearing from, you know, distant relatives who have their own lives and their own things and just being able to catch up and, and get, you know, reacclimated uh, that we orbit in the same space. And it's been really good. And so I didn't want to, you know, just come with step one, step two, step three today. I really kind of wanted to just, you know, talk about this because the cure of isolating yourself is counterintuitive to everything that we know to be healthy, to remain safe, and to be strong. Isn't it the weirdest thing that our ancestors in the hunter-gatherer days, the way they survived was to huddle together, to hunt and live together because they were able to (laughs) keep their immune system stronger by being around each other and, you know, catching each other's little stuff here and there. Um, And it made them stronger. And the ultimate punishment, if you did something wrong by them, was, you guessed it, isolation and exile. You go it alone. It was like a death sentence because it was that important. When I was talking about the A part, I was talking about one of the times when I was little and my, my grandmother would do our little punishments and she'd be like, you know, you need to go in there, sit down and think about your actions. And I am of the age where we did not have all of the little handhelds and the phones and this. So when you had, when you got sent to your room, you really got sent to your room. There was nothing in there to do but a bed and maybe some books you know, or you could stare at the little clock, that it was a real thing. And uh, so the whole uh, thing that uh, I was reminiscent of was how it felt being uh, in that situation and how it's reminiscent of today. And I was like, wow. So anyway, um, I want to talk about a few other things about how you can lessen the impact of this this isolation punishment. And for those of you who are saying, Michelle, this does look like this does feel like solitary confinement. I want you to know that you have only but to reach out and to make use of uh, your connections to your friends and your family. And if it gets real bad, put it out on social media. That's the fun thing about right now is that more people are reconnecting to get closer to the people who actually are uh, close to them. 
you know, you can you can send an email, uh, send a text, pick up a phone, FaceTime, Zoom call, Instagram chat. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually, and I know this sounds funny, but I actually have some nieces that um, I'm going to be getting in touch with and I'm going to challenge them to a dance off to get my exercise because I'm tired of walking just on my treadmill. I got to mix it up. And so I'm going to challenge them. You know, we're going to possibly do it over FaceTime or Instagram. I'm going to have a little, you know, some dance, dance offs here and, and do fun things because it matters that you are able to a lot of times have the face to face, even if you can't touch them and hug them, just even having face to face uh, through the digital will help tremendously. So I want to talk really quickly about some of the things that you want to be aware of that are lurking out there to watch yourself or watch those that you know. So social media is great until it isn't. And I'm not saying it's for you, but if you are feeling vulnerable, like you're saying, well, Michelle, I don't have family to do this and that or whatever. Um, I want you to get into some type of uh, digital environment where the people uh, have have proven to not be vicious, where you do not knowingly uh, not uh, not knowingly, but where you don't get into into troll farms and that and the like. Find places where you can congregate and, you know, reach out to people. Don't don't be bleeding all over people and sucking up all the energy in the air, talking about feed me, feed me. I'm needy. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, give as good as you get. Um, but vet the places. And the reason why is because there was a recent. Let's see. What's the date on this one? Uh, there was a warning that went out on the 26th. Well, just a few days ago, uh, to be aware of uh, the spread of extremism for people who are lonely and who are looking to be entertained or who are vulnerable to being swayed, seduced, and finessed online uh, by, by groups who are classified as ext- extremists, but who will befriend you and you won't know that you're being befriended by someone with ulterior motives to sway you. Now, we've done a lot of different podcasts here to talk about uh, mental persuasion and uh, who's who's changing your mind. I, I did a recent Wisdom Smack Skills training on that, uh, how to tell if you're being duped, and a, a lot of different ones that we've done on this podcast. If you want to go back and check them out, I encourage you to do so. But I want to just say right here and right now, be on the lookout, even though you are you have more free time, even if you work every day. The fact that you don't have to get dressed, get up, get commuting and go to the grocery store, you know, on your way home every day or pick up something. You're giving yourself anywhere from two to four extra free hours that you wouldn't normally have if you were continuing to have your normal uh, schedule. And so with all that free time, it's going to be feel some kind of way. So beware. And uh, be be wise. That's that's what I really want to say. And the next thing is is to don't get um, don't don't get seduced by disinformation and tantalizing headlines. Some of the the biggest um, the I don't I don't want to call anybody names, but people are being pawns. And I did a podcast talking about from pawn to player. Understand the game that you're in. And when someone puts something on the internet, that doesn't make it true. And it get, it's getting actually harder and harder to vet even the information that's not true because you have so many people trying to be the first to crack something to get the scoop that someone will put out a hoax or or, or a snippet snippet of truth with uh, with filler and fluff, and they'll just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, and then they'll get picked up by what are supposed to, supposed to be reputable blogs and and media sites. And before you know it, a few days later, and somebody's got to put out a retraction. But by then, enough people have heard it that they believe it. And I will tell you, a retraction has way less efficacy than the initial reaction to misinformation. Do not find yourself being one of those people and a proponent for spreading it. 
Just because something is tantalizing does not mean that you need to immediately start uh, retweeting it and reposting it. Take just a few minutes. Google if you have to. Just start with even just a Google and check and see where did this come from? In my other podcast where I talked about, you know, not being duped, ask yourself, who wrote this? What is their goal for writing this? What do they believe and stand for? Who are these people? What is the, what is this blog? What is this 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 uh, media company? And do a little due diligence before you spread it because you do not want to be an unknowing foot soldier for foolishness. Don't do it because many predators, not even I, the extremists are one thing, but you also have predators who are out there who are on the hunt to recruit you, recru- uh, uh, corrupt you and steal from you. There are going to be so many things in the aftermath that we can't even we can't even think of right now that will become the no, new norm of how we have to be diligent to protect ourselves after this event there are some very clever people out there that will come up with inventive ways to either separate you from your money or separate you from the, your freedom and your liberty be aware of uh when when you when you had a gut feeling don't, don't, sh- you know, don't push it off. It's just, oh, uh, no, trust your gut. Follow it through. Be leery and skeptical. I would say in times right, like right now, up your skepticism a hundredfold. In God we trust, everybody else we check out is how my grandfather used to say it. Nobody gets a free pass right now. Check everyone out because people with the best intentions will send you stuff that will lead you down a path that you can't come back from. So please listen to wisdom and take a moment to not just believe everything you say because you're lonely and you haven't talked to anybody and you're just doing stuff to be doing stuff. The old folks were right when they said an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So I want you to be aware of that. So, of course, I don't want to just tell you don't, don't, don't and not tell you some do, do, do's. Okay, so I want you to do different things. Yesterday, I talked about how you can have many different options and I gear it towards options of survival and livelihood. But today, I want to give you some other options when you find that you are having to physically distance yourself and you might be in a solitary situation. You can practice the arts. That is one of the biggest things. Before, uh, when we had the Renaissance, the European Renaissance, as I have studied it, So I'm not going to stand 10 toes and say, this is how it was. It's just that from what I've studied, um, the expression of the arts was a honorable thing. And most people, when they were done with their labors and stuff, they would come in, they would practice and they would engage in the arts, whether it was, whether it was drawing or some type of sculpture or whittling, you know, or it was playing an instrument or it was writing or poetry or 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 even and get this ciphers yeah ciphers whether uh you know puzzles and the like whether it was engaging in some kind of form of that that is how they were able to uh entertain themselves whether they were with people at night or by themselves. And there was nothing for you to see young people who were uh, uh, shepherds, male and female, who would have to be out in the fields with their sheep for days on end. And they were fine. It was just them and nature and the sheep and maybe a dog. And they would engage in ways of keeping themselves entertained. And we we are now full circle where we're going to have to engage in a way to entertain ourselves. And I will tell you, I am the first one to say, without electricity and Wi-Fi, I, I, I'm i going to be honest, I'm in the struggle. And so what I normally am uh, doing and taking for granted, I am now being cognizant to pull back from that and pull out some of those books on my shelves and starting to go back and read some of those and uh, getting used to uh, 
learning how to be self-sufficient in my entertainment, in, in my downtimes, you know, before I fall asleep and those kinds of things. And I also want to say that, like I said before, move your body. You have to exercise. I can't tell you how much that matters. And it's not just because you are eating more because you're at home. No, the studies that we do have about uh, isolation and uh, alienation, if you will, show that When we are by ourselves, we tend to not move as much. We tend to get into a survival mode of cocooning and of shutting down and not moving like we need to. And so if you have found that "Hmm, this last week or two weeks, you know, if you've been, you know, staying in place, get up and move. And don't just do the same thing all the time. Mix it up. If you've been uh, like I have on my treadmill and with my my free weights, mix it up and do some dance. I have a jump rope going out in the garage and jumping rope. You you know, some of the things I'm going to, you know, I'm I'm starting to do this this next week. Uh, But have some variety and understand that you're doing it as a loving care for the temple that you live in, which is your body. Uh, Also, reaching out to people in a way that you let them know, I don't want anything but to spend some quality time talking with you. Do you have time? And making yourself uh, do morning pages or mental dumps before you talk to people. Write it all out, dump it all out, all the complaining, all of the stuff that's not right, so that when you get on the phone with someone, you all can laugh and share good things and have true good fellowship so that this doesn't become a one-way therapy session where you go around treating people like emotional uh, trash collectors that you just dump your stuff on them and once you feel better, okay, I feel better. On to the next one. That's not what you need to do. Um, A little while back, I did a podcast talking about uh, are you a good listener? And boy, I can tell you, there are a lot of people who think they're great listeners and they are not. Oh no, they are not. They are interrupters. They are talker overs. They are people who are only waiting to get their uh, statement out they're just waiting to for a lull in your uh, talk for them to say what they want to say. Now would be a good time for you to start practicing active listening and good conversation, knowing how to keep the conversation progressing and going and how to not just be a good listener, but be a good listener as well as a good contributor because it matters. Do you realize that when you have times like this, the hard times are where all of the opportunity seems to gang up because opportunity is sometimes disguised as work, danger, or duress. And you can turn these things into something. Um, I don't know who told me this a long time ago, but it stuck with me and it's a hard pill to swallow. But it, the person said something that when you have trouble in your life, that is simply an opportunity for you to figure out the answer and come up with a new way to address it. It is life's way of helping you to think differently, move differently, and be different. And I want to tell you that, that because you are in isolation, because you're not supposed to be moving around and all of this kind of stuff, and you're finally, hopefully, getting somewhere and as my grandmother would say sat down get somewhere and sat down not sit down sat down hopefully you're going to take good opportunity of this time to collect your thoughts like she would say and learn how to be a better version of you learn how to uh self self self-soothe by understanding how to entertain yourself in ways that are not destructive uh don't Binge watch so much Netflix and and streaming services to your, you know, bloodshot eyes only to get up and do it again the next day if if you find that you're not necessarily working. Take the time to shock yourself by determining to come up with something that you never came up with to solve an issue. So say, for instance, maybe you are someone who is at home, not of your own free will and not working for someone and you are in a new situation where it's very scary, take this time to 
understand that truly you are not alone and that you are able to uh, get to the heart of the matter of getting still and getting quiet to hear and to know and to be the person that you could always be. Um, I'm going to say this again. I said it in many other podcasts that during uh, times like these, this is when, especially for the United States, we had the most inventions, patents, and technology, technological advancements uh, to ever come. That's how we are. Necessity is truly the mother of invention. And this too shall pass. The cure might feel like a punishment about, you know, when we're asking you to isolate, but it doesn't have to be. You've got this. We've got this. You are not alone. Everybody is having to do this, do the same thing. We are in solidarity and we are in this together. So, yep, guess what? My time is up. I really want to thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spiva, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom, with today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. Now, in the few seconds that I have left, I want you to challenge yourself to do something that you're not used to doing. I just saw this when I was looking down at my notes and I forgot to tell you that one of the fastest ways to help you to get over the sting of being isolated is to work with your hands. Even if you learn how to do funny things with your fingers, to make animals with your fingers, do something, but start now and stop fixating on what you can't do be grateful. So that's it. This is a daily podcast. So I'm going to see you tomorrow. And thank you so much for listening. Have a good one. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.